today I took a title as surgical strike. I'm a surgeon, I'm a liver transplant surgeon, I mean I'm a liver surgeon and I worked in the UK for 25 years and came back to India about 12 years ago. I've been working here ever since. I have an interest in transplantation of children. I think why I call surgery as a strike, you must have heard that terminology and I'm going to come to that in a few minutes because surgery does cause injury with an intention to really help the patients. Everybody knows that it's alcohol which causes liver disease. Anybody would know. And those of you who are a little bit educated about liver disease will know it's caused by viral hepatitis. That used to be the most common cause. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C are the causes of transplantation. But now we've got very effective vaccination for hepatitis B and cure for hepatitis C. So that is slowly disappearing. But you'll be surprised to know that the most common reason why we have liver disease now is junk food. But don't you think that it doesn't apply to us, that we don't consume junk food. Actually, it's excess food in any ways, mainly carbohydrate. Our food is not enough. If we don't burn our food enough, then it gets stored in the liver, gets converted to fat, you get fatty liver, and then cirrhosis and liver cancer. I think the humans have not been used to too much food. I think humans have been in existence for over a million years. I think it's only in the last 50 years we have got excess food. We have not evolved enough to handle excess food. And that's why we suffer from liver disease. The other issue really is, which surprises many people, who think that diseases of liver diseases only comes in adults and it's not a disease of children, are mistaken. One third of patients who are getting transplant are children. And why is that? I think many children are born with metabolic diseases inherited diseases or congenital anomalies which cause liver diseases. It's very sad when you see children suffering. You're almost wondering, you know, many, many diseases like neurological diseases, children born with neurological diseases, it affects the family for the rest of their life. I almost think that it's unfair on the part that children are suffering from diseases. And it's, it's almost like the parents are fighting a battle, you know, a good versus the evil with their own gods overlooking it and nothing happening. You know, it is really sad. And there is empathy all over the world for children. It's very easy to get funding when we want to transplant children, even with group funding, because everybody empathizes with children. And I'll come to that, just to going back to the history. I think the first liver transplant was done by Professor Thomas Tarzel in the United States about 50 years ago. He's a pioneer, he's a pioneer, and sometimes pioneers have to be ruthless. I don't want to describe him as ruthless, he's a scientist. But a lot of the patients died. I mean, without transplant, they would have died within days. But in the first few attempts, a lot of them died, and then it became successful subsequently. And I had, he's no more, he died about six, seven years ago. And um, I had an opportunity to meet him and, and when he, he visited us in King's College Hospital. Coming to children with liver disease, when I went to the UK, I took an interest in children with liver disease. And this is a newborn child born with liver disease, would not survive even one week. And it's really an interest in this where I went into the techniques, it's a problem solving exercise where you can actually split a cadaver liver, or even in the living donor setting, you can take one-eighth of a liver or one-sixth of a liver and then transplant it to the child, and it transforms a life. And you got me introduced as somebody who has done a uh, transplant on a five-day-old child. And that's, that has not been broken. That record has not been broken for the last 25 years. So this is the child who had the transplant at five days of age. It's an Irish family. The disease is a congenital disorder. The child was born with it. And two other children in that family were, died immediately after birth. But there was one survivor, the older, older child. And that was a child five days after. 
I'm sorry, five years after the transplant, and uh, there is a video, I'm not going to play that video, of a press conference where the mother thanks the donor. It was a cadaver donor, which was a pediatric donor, and how it transforms the life of their, their family and their children. And that girl now is 24 years old, and she's a lawyer. I think she's 25 years old, and I was very young at that time. And when I met her in the UK, I asked her to come to, the U to India, because in India there were many children dying of liver disease, and people were not convinced how it would be. I think in our culture, people feel that maybe we should have another child and not bother about this child. So that attitude was there probably 20 years ago. I think now it has changed. Funding is also another problem. And a girl like that, who comes 25 years after transplant on very little medication, looking so beautifully, and we presented her to an audience of 1,500 doctors on that day, only for me to convince that transplantation transforms the life of individuals. Now, this requires precision. This surgery requires precision. I'm just going to do a little bit of not really politics and, and what is happening in the current world. I think it was in the first Gulf War, the terminology called surgical strike was used. That terminology of surgical strike was used because they felt that the technology had developed so much that they can precisely go and hit a target and take off whatever they wanted to do. The first, war, the first Gulf War, I think, is about 25 years ago, if I'm 91, or 30 years ago, 32 years ago. It was, I'm sure, technology has improved tremendously, precision has improved tremendously, but however precise those bombs are, the effect is horrendous. And I think in the current conflict, it's the children who are dying. And to see that we struggle so much to save the life of a child, and on the other hand, so many children dying in war is something really which is very difficult to take on. Now, surgical strike is not a surgical strike. I mean, we have to make big incisions to cure people. And if you see here, that is the liver of a child which is a diseased liver, and we remove a diseased liver, and at the end of the surgical strike, you have a beautiful liver from a mother sitting inside, and this child will recover within days to become a normal child. And this has resulted, really, the Tamil Nadu government, the Indian, mainly Tamil Nadu government has supported transplantation and funded transplantation. And when we completed 500 transplantation in children, we celebrated with government officials for them to see how well these children were. Most of these children were transplanted when they were less than one year of age. Majority of them would have been less than six months of age, weighing less than five kilograms. And I'm sure many of them will grow up to look as beautiful as the girl you saw from Ireland. I have no doubt about that. Now, where do we go with surgery? Where do we go? Paradoxically, surgery initially started for trauma. In the days when we didn't have anesthesia, most of it was war trauma, in fact. Amputations were done with people being awake. They knew that if they did not remove dead tissue, these people will die. So, improvement, if we just look at the historical improvement in surgery, anesthesia came into being. When we now, anesthesia is now so smooth, that when we consent patients, at least in the West, I'm not sure how we talk to them here, because um, the, the terminology used is very different. The word used is, we're going to put you to sleep. Actually, anesthesia is almost like putting somebody to sleep, and they wake up, and the operation is done. There is no pain. Surgery is done very precisely now. No collateral damage. I'm not saying there is absolutely zero collateral damage. You could say the complications of surgery that we describe is collateral damage because we have to talk to them about really complications of surgery. And the word informed consent you would have used. I'm not sure how informed everybody is going to be before they undergo surgery, but everybody is scared of surgery. Now, surgery has moved on from large scars to really keyhole surgery as well. 
and keyhole surgery is not used to be for small operations but now it's no more for small operations keyhole surgery can be done for larger operation and that has resulted in a quicker recovery i want to finish off by really talking about the recent advances in keyhole surgery i've had an interest in it can somebody play this video because it's it's important precision surgery we're talking about precision surgery when you've got an area which is too narrow to get into which requires a very large incision because it's a narrow area in the pelvis like the the mainly urological surgery the keyhole surgery helps a lot here the surgeon is not even next to the patient the surgeon is actually in a console and then his movements are transmitted by the computer electronically and the movements actually happen in the in this it's a very short video so this is this is the result of it you can you can see that the first one was a mother trying to donate part of the liver no mother will object to having a big scar to save the side, to to save the life of the child but that's the scar that is left behind for doing a big operation on the liver the next is a son he's a 21 year old boy who is donating for his father who is 55 year old but that boy will not have a big scar he does not want to have a big scar actually confidentially he said that he wouldn't undergo the operation if there was a scar because body image was very important for him so surgery has actually changed tremendously over the years to accommodate really starting with anesthesia pain control early recovery and now with good cosmetic outcome so what is the future of surgery i mean i'm a surgeon standing here do i want to do surgery i think most of the surgeons in the early part of their career would be very enthusiastic about surgery because they can transform when they do an operation they can see that they can cure a patient but as you get older and as you do bigger and bigger surgery you also see the complications of surgery you also see the collateral damage of surgery and that's when you think about whether we are doing the right thing i think the question here is i think doctors should neither overestimate their capacity to heal nor underestimate the capacity to cause harm if we actually remember this we will restrain ourselves from being over enthusiastic to do things that might harm people as a surgeon what i'd like to see do i like to see the transplantation is going to be there forever i would like to see transplantation disappear off from the field of surgery why do i say that i think the future should be that we find cure for treatments i think we are moved a long way for treatment of cancer i do transplantation for cancer and cure patients and i would like to believe that say in 50 years time it may not be in my lifetime in your lifetime maybe in 20 years time there are going to be drugs which will melt away cancer and you will be looking back if some of you become doctors will think what a horrible thing those surgeons used to do these these tumors could have been easily cured by medication and they used to actually do a a very cruel operation called liver transplantation where they have to take the liver and give a new liver i think that da that date is not far away yes there will be surgery still in existence because for trauma you need surgery but the infectious diseases would come under control the metabolic diseases might have gene therapy coming in and your fitness which is really the most common cause your your food habits your lifestyle which is probably the most common cause of most diseases i hope people will come to terms with it and improve their lifestyle and put an end to most of what we call surgery today thank you very much